Hello everybody, uh, back again in the workshop. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video but uh, I'm about to start a new project and uh, this is one that I've uh, come up with for a result of uh, um, a query on the Model Engineers Workshop forum. Uh, someone was making a die filer and uh, wanted to ideas on how to make the uh, vertical motion. I came up with the idea of a, a modified shaper style um, lever action which I'll explain shortly uh, with a diagram, of a diagram. and uh, I've eventually got around to um, getting the bits together and uh, making it up. So without any more ado I'll take you over to the bench and we'll have a look at my plans. Over at the bench, uh, I've amassed uh, a few raw materials here, including uh, a strimmer motor which I've salvaged. If that doesn't work properly, I've got another one up on a shelf, um, which is uh, brand new and unused. And um, I'll press that into service if necessary. This is the design. It's uh, basically the motor, which I've just shown you, uh, driving through a small pulley to a larger um, bull wheel. That's mounted on a spindle through two vertical mounts running in ball bearings. Uh, the rocking lever uh, it has a, a stroke adjustment here and that uh, it drives in turn the um, bearing mount here. As it rotates the arm goes up and down driving the uh, slide vertically which holds the, the file, whichever one is in use. Um, longitudinal uh, restraint is taken care of by these articulated pivots here. Now I've decided for uh, cheapness <laughs> to use um, acrylic for the base plate, acrylic for the top plate and for the spindle mounts and the motor mount also black acrylic because I just happen to have some. The columns will be uh, 10 mm steel and they'll be screwed into the top plate uh, and uh, bolts will retain them on the, on the bottom. The ram slide will be uh, metal, there's a brass gribs, jib strip and a metal ram. Various old bits of um, silver steel for pivots and what have you. Uh, and that's about it. Anyway, today I'm going to be uh, carving out the um, motor mount to spindle mounts and the top plate over on the uh, router. I've got it all set up and I'm just about to start uh, the mount. These will all be um, made out on, on, or I've laid them out on a single piece of A4 acrylic sheet um, and I've arranged them such that I can move, uh, cut them all out uh, with one setting. I'm about to uh, start cutting out the main spindle mounts. Um, if everything goes according to plan, the router bit will move over to somewhere over uh, towards the uh, sort of top right of the perspex, uh, and it will start cutting out the uh, um, first motor mount, uh, um, spindle mount. I mean, uh, if not, well, you probably won't be seeing this. <laughs> so there we go. Spindles coming on shortly. Here we come. Lots of noise.
fenders on next time. Uh, yes. It very nearly went right through. I think I'll adjust the Z height just a fraction for the next one. Otherwise, that didn't turn out too bad. Um, I'm going to cut the other one and that will come out around here. You don't need to see that. So you've missed out on some of the fun. Uh, I tried to cut the motor mount out which should come out up here but for some reason the router shot over to uh, a point on the board here which is way off beam so I cancelled that. Uh, I must admit I have done a dry run with the outline for the top which will go here. I've already done some um, holes which are for 5mm tapping and 5mm uh, through holes here. So we'll see how we get on with those. There we go. Uh, I won't much you make you watch all of this. I will film it, but I'll snip them bits out in the middle. Uh, well, you may have been this will drop out. That's because I lowered the Z axis because these weren't quite cutting through to the bottom of the material, and I rather overdid it. So the tabs ended up being cut away as well. However, I got away with it. Just got to find out uh, why it's not cutting the motor mount out here. I'll go and do the uh, G code again and see if I can uh, find out what's happening. And I'll bring you back later if I can get it to work. After a couple of attempts, I uh, think I've got the uh, G code right. I've done a dry run and it appears to be cutting in the right place. So uh, I'll give it a go on this piece and uh, hope I don't muck it up. Here we go.
Yeah, well, I don't think it's quite gone through. So, oh, yes, it has. Look, just needs a little persuasion. It's the um, sticky back plastic on the bottom that's holding it, uh, holding it in. So, there you are. A little rough on the um, recess here. I can clean that up with a, a rotary um, bit of abrasive. But uh, um, I was a little too aggressive on the step over. If I'd halved uh, maybe the step over, it would have given a much better finish. However, I'm still learning. That over to the bench and uh, start doing a bit of uh, tidying up. Nearly 24 hours has passed, and uh, we're back in the workshop. I've had a bit of a clean up, hoover around, and what have you, and I've uh, put a new piece of black uh, acrylic perspex sheet in here, ready to cut the base plate out. Um, I'm cutting from underneath, as it were, so this is upside down if you like. Um, there are five processes to go through, boring 5mm holes, boring 6mm holes, uh, counter-boring those to 8 and 10mm diameter respectively. Um, that's four. Oh, and the fifth one, of course, is cutting the um, outside profile. Um, I've loaded it all up to do it all in one go, and according to the computer here, it should take six minutes. But um, if it drags on a bit, I'll uh, cut it down. So, right, here we go then. Uh, start. Gonna take a run at it, change the tool. Uh, well, as you probably saw, it uh, it did it again, milled away the tabs. I must have set the Z height wrong. But, assuming those holes are in the places where I want them to be, that's okay. It goes out that way. Good. Over to the bench. Okay, well, I've brought you back to the bench to show you the... Uh, Base. There we are. See the holes now, um, and the counterboard underside. Um, I realise, of course, that uh, oh, there's me. Hello. Um, black was probably not a very good choice of colour for the uh, these parts. They don't show up all that well. However, it is what it is. Um, and if I just roughly place these parts on here, that's the motor mount. Just still got a bit of a tab on the back there. That goes on there. The spindle mounts, one will go there. 
long will go there. Um, all the rest of the gubbins churned around there. Um, for example, I don't know if I can get that roughly in position. Oops. But it'll go on the end of the motor spindle and the, that cog will go on there. Um, and then the top plate, supported by pillars from there, 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 and there. Uh, get this the right way round. We'll go. Yes, there. About there. With the file coming out of the hole here, going up and down, whizzy whizzy. Um, I've still got to drill some more holes in these, for example, uh, the mounting holes in here. But I'll do those on the on the mill. Um, so obviously I can't um, drill those with the CNC router. Anyway, it's coming on. Um, next up, I think I'll make the pillars. Um, they're only they're being made out of uh, 10 mil um, bright mild steel, and um, well, that'll be part of the next uh, episode, I suppose. Good job I'm not doing this for a living, um, I'd never make a fortune, even a small one. So um, it'll be a while before we come back for the next one and I'll uh, do it in short dribs and drabs. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have been, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.